Hey everyone, Eran Stern here with another creative tutorial for Artbeats.com. In this two-part tutorial, we'll create a short commercial for the famous, though fictional, mineral water drink that goes by the name Splash. That's right, with an explanation mark. Okay, so first I want to share with you the final spot, and then we'll break it apart. In the first tutorial, we'll work inside Premiere Pro in order to lay out the narrative story. Then in part two, we'll concentrate on the motion graphic design part for the pack shot in the end. But now let's start from the editing stage. And then we'll concentrate on matching their colors and also composite few extra elements in order to create a consistent look throughout the whole piece. So in this scenario, let's imagine that we've received a brief from the client that asks us to highlight the personality of the brand. And what better way to do so if not to bring real people into this game? So my first decision here was to create a short edit based on stock footage in order to lower their production costs. And by the way, this is a true story. However, I didn't get permission to show the real commercial work, so instead I'm recreating a similar scene over here. Anyway, I've headed to Artbeats website and searched for the term people spin. I came out with few dozens results and chosen the best clip that I thought that will match my idea. By that I mean that I've downloaded the full res comps of my selected clips. Then I import them into Premiere Pro and started to trim according to the sound. In this case, I'm using a clip from premiumbeat.com library and also a simple sound effect to highlight the fresh water splash near the end of the shot. After half an hour or so, I've managed to come up with this draft quality timeline, which was approved by the client. At this point, I could remove the unused clips from the project and purchase the full royalty clips from the Artbeats library. Once done, you can go to your Premiere Pro timeline, select one of these clips, and then right click on it and choose Reveal in Project. Then select all the relevant shots and choose Make Offline. You can now choose to keep the media file on disk or not according to your needs. Note that we have few extra clips here, which I'm going to use in a moment in order to add some watery feel to the video, but for now let's move on. The next step is to right click on these still selected clips here and choose Link Media. Then navigate to where you save the online files and let Premiere Pro Media Management tool to do the rest. The tool will spot the same names of the clips and will replace them with the original high quality shots. You can verify this by scrubbing the timeline and also play some of it full screen just to check the quality. And as expected, this looks fantastic. And now that we've managed to tell the story and create an online version, in terms of quality of course, let's move on to the next step which is to match the colors and also composite few other elements to create a cohesive look. I'll start by adding the three-way color corrector effect to the first shot and using the mid-tone eyedropper, I'll sample this medium blue from the sky and then with the eyedropper of the highlights, 
I'll sample a lighter version of the same color. I believe this helps to white balance the shot and remove some of the blue color cast. However, I may need to push it a bit by dragging the magnitude pin to the upper part on both cases. I'm also going to lift the gamma here, just a touch, to open up the curve. And for now, I think it looks good. Now I'll repeat the same steps more or less for the rest of the clips, trying to first get the correct colors, the white, gray, and black colors in place, and only then I'll move to creating a full consistent look for the whole spot. So I'll apply the three-way color corrector effect to the second clip, and this one of course got a warm beige tint to it. So let's try to fix that by sampling these tones to the mids and also to the highlights and work with the magnitude slider until it looks right. Now in this case, I'll take the gamma here to around 1.1 and also I may want to crush the blacks maybe to around 14. Now, as you may know, this is a subjective task. You need to eyeball it and match the colors as much as possible, but in a reasonable manner. Do note that each one of these clips is coming from a different conditions, so it will be a challenge to exactly match them, but do the best that you can. For the sake of time, I'm going to move forward and I will meet you after I'm going to finish this primary color grade to the rest of these shots. Now that we have this ready more or less, let's spice up the creation with some of extra clips from the ultra slow motion water collection of Artbeats. I'll start by adding the UW230 clip to the track above our edits and also trim the end of it so it won't play above the last pack shot. On this great clip, we see water jets from unseen sprinkles filling up the frames. This has a nice spray look, and more importantly, it was shot on a black background, which can be easily be dismissed using the screen blending mode. So let's do just that. I'll select the clip, and let's move to the effect controls panel. And here I can set the blend mode to be screen. And I also going to lower the opacity to say 60%. Now let's play the results and see how it looks. It definitely helps to merge the clips. However, I think I'm going to add another clip to this party. This one is also from the same ultra slow motion water collection. And this is clip UW27. This shows us some kind of trickles of water pouring against the blue frame plate. So let's watch it for a few seconds. It is very relaxing and it's always interesting to look at water, fire, and artist in its work. Okay, back to reality. Let's repeat the same drill here. I'm going to place it above the existing video and trim its end. Then I'm going to search for the ultra key effect, apply it to the clip, and key out the blue color. Now, as a result, we are getting some pinkish leftovers from the original colors of the water in the clip. I'm going to solve this by applying the fast color corrector effect and then reducing the saturation value to around 35%. The next step is optional, but I think it will contribute to the look and feel of the whole spot. So. My aim here is to create the feeling that the water are actually warping around the actors and not just pouring from above. For that, I'm going to search for the sphere size effect. 
and then I'm going to apply it as well. Here, I'll set the radius value to 1000, and then change the center of sphere to be higher on the frame, only on the Y axis. Great, now let's check it in action, and I'm going to play it from the start, of course. Now, I see that I'm not getting a real-time playback here. Of course, you can tell it by just looking at the red line on top of the timeline. So, I'm going to reduce my quality to half, which should suffice in this case. And let's play it once again to see the whole composite. Okay, we are almost done, and now I want to add an overall color treatment to all of the clips, just to make them more constant and in the neighborhood of the last shot, and also to match the colors of the logo itself. For that, I'll return to the project panel and create a color matte layer. Now, I happen to know the values for this layer that I want to ingest. It will be a kind of blue, so I'm going to plug them in the RGB value. So 50 for the red, 120 for the green, and 170 for the blue. Next, I'll drag this color mat to the timeline and generate a new video layer above everything that I already have. Now, this time I want to cover all of the clips, so I'm going to trim it here at the end. Then I'll select it and open up the effect controls, and I'm going to set the blend mode to color, and the opacity to 40%. Now it looks too blue to my taste, and I want to bring back some of the skin tones. So I'll create another new layer, this time it's going to be an adjustment layer. I'm going to accept the default timeline settings here, and then drag the layer to a new video track above everything. Next, in the effect panels, I'm going to search for the word dreams. I'm going to use a built-in Lumetri color lookup table to colorize everything under this adjustment layer. So I'm going to drag this dreams effect and place it on the adjustment layer. Now again, it is way too much. In fact, it looks kind of ugly, but it does emphasize the colors that I'm after. So in order to calm it down, I'm going to choose the hue blending mode, as well as lowering the opacity of the whole adjustment layer to 30%. And this is way better. Now in order to see it in its full glory, we need to render the effects in this timeline, so I'm going to do so by pressing on the return key. And then, when it's finished, I'm going to move to full frame, and we're going to see the final result. Okay, this looks very promising, but remember that this is still missing the last pack shot which I'm going to cover in an upcoming tutorial. For now, I hope you saw how easy it is to build a fresh and personal commercial all based upon stock footage clips from artbeats.com and of course, few compositing tricks inside Adobe Premiere Pro. Until next time we'll meet, this is Eran Stern for artbeats.com and now guys, it's your turn to show us your spin.